now since I left Walmart, I've started now six companies. Okay. <laughs> since you uh, left Walmart? Yes. So within six the past. months. Six months? I'm like wow. a cage animal, you know? <laughs> like I was just waiting to like be an entrepreneur again. I had all That's these amazing. ideas in my head. And they all just boom came out. Welcome back to another episode of Run with Sam, a show where I interview successful people while we run. Today's guest, I'm super excited to have him on. His name is Mark Lori. He is a very successful entrepreneur, businessman. He was the CEO of Walmart e-commerce. He's built and sold multiple companies worth billions of dollars. And he's now the owner of an NBA basketball team. We're here in Tribeca, and today we're going running with Mark Lori. So Mark, thank you for coming on the show. Hey, great to be here. I feel like I introduced you, you know, before we met, but I feel like I didn't do it justice. What has been your, your proudest accomplishments? And obviously, you know, the kids are the most proud, but right. I have two daughters. Uh, That's amazing. <laughs> you know, business-wise, you know, it's hard, it's hard to pick. It's like there's a consistent theme through all the companies, and uh, I'm really proud of the culture. Mm -hmm. People uh, undervalue culture. People say it's important, but don't put the time and effort into really making it something special. I think what's super inspiring with your story is that you really built these massive successful companies from scratch and just from an idea. And you know, what would you credit that success to? Would you say it's the people in that culture? VCP, vision capital people. You gotta make sure you have a really clear vision of where you want to be 10, 20 years down the future. Right. So you know, big, big thinking. Mm -hmm. Spend a lot of time. I might spend you know, like a hundred hours just on vision, right. crafting it, working with the team, get everybody on board, mm -hmm. so everybody knows exactly what the long-term goal is. Make sure you raise enough capital so that you can go out and hire the very best team in the world mm -hmm. early on. And wasn't the headquarters of Jet.com the company that you sold to Walmart just across the Hudson here? Yes. That's right. <laughs> yeah. And diapers.com as well. Oh, really? Both of them. In Hoboken, right? One Hoboken, one Jersey City. Okay. What was it like building a big company with you know thousands of employees? There's a hard way and there's an easy way. The hard way is don't hire the right executive management team. Right. Yeah. <laughs> if you hire the right executive management team, it's easy because you know as a CEO or founder, you're managing you know six to eight people. Yeah. Really good people that you know are easy to manage. <laughs> And then they each hire trickle down, trickle down, right? Yeah. So now since I left Walmart, I started now six companies. Okay. Since uh, you left Walmart? Yes. So within six the past months. Six months. I'm like wow. a caged animal, you know. <laughs> like I was just waiting to like be an entrepreneur again. I had all That's these amazing. ideas in my head, and they all just boom came out. That's incredible. I guess you know from that, how do you come up with new ideas? Is there, you know, like a process that you go through or? I think talking to people, I think a lot of people, they'll look for and think when you do a startup, you need to find something that's not been done before and really inventive and unique. Usually those are niche businesses mm -hmm. a lot of times. Yeah. Because you're like filling a void. I'm, I prefer a little different approach. If you identify a massive market that's got tailwinds that's growing and you have a big vision, which doesn't have to be anything inventive, just a little right. hook. Mm -hmm. Raise more capital than anyone else. Okay. And hire the best team in the world. That company is going to be valuable. How come you're not breathing at all? <laughs> <laughs> like, you look like you're standing still, man. <laughs> when was the last time you went for a run? Like a run like this kind of run? Yeah. No, I'm a 40 yard dash sprinter, so <laughs> I haven't run more than 40 yards. I'm trying to think if I've done it in the last decade. <laughs> This is officially the first I've run Amazing. since I was my, in my 30s. You know, it seems like you live a very healthy lifestyle. How are you able to balance you know, a healthy lifestyle despite your busy schedule? I think you have to make it a priority first. Right? It's important. People would always say, like, I don't have time to work out. I mean, you work out and then you don't have time for work. You know, whatever it is, you have to make it a priority. Right. The other thing that I've done is, it used to be more all or none. I like, feel like if I'm going to work out, I have to work out six days a week, right. you know? Now I've got a much more balanced approach where I work out every other day, strength training, mm -hmm. plyometrics, stuff like that. Gets the heart rate, yeah. kind of racing, but more strength, and I do it every other day. Okay. Like hit it hard, and then rest the day, hit it hard, and that's like sustainable for a lifetime. What would you recommend for someone to set themselves up for success, like in their day-to-day -day life? Is there, yeah. do you have any like success habits or? Yeah, no, so here's the thing, I do, I do. <laughs> 
you have to clear all the noise in, in terms of tangible things that you do that take time every day and try and like free up time, you know, trying to outsource basically yeah. as much as you possibly can and be willing to pay for it. Like, you know, it might be expensive to outsource certain things, but nothing more valuable than your time. Do more thinking and less reading. More so thinking, less reading? Yeah. Okay. I yeah, like so that. there's a lot of people, they just consume, read, 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 and they know everything, but they don't spend enough time thinking about what they read. Right. If you want to invent, you want to innovate, you want to create something, it's got to be in your own mind. You're not going to like just read a book and there's the idea, I'm going to go do it. And you started your career not too far from here, actually. Yeah, right near uh, World Financial Center. That was in your 20s? Yeah, you're right out of school. You know, if you could go back in time and tell yourself in your 20s one thing, what would you tell yourself? Be patient. Okay. I think people in their early 20s like, feel like they got to like just figure it out and got to start like getting into their career and just start start running. Yeah. I would use the early 20s if I went back, learn, learn, absorb as much as you possibly can, try yeah. things, experiment, um, take a risk, mm -hmm. try to start a company, you know, try things. And also surround yourself with the smartest, best leaders you can. Okay. You know, like when you see somebody, you're like, wow, that person's inspiring. Try to get to know them, spend some time with them, you know? Learn, ask questions. Yeah, that's great advice. What would you say to someone who's building a business today who doesn't necessarily have the funds or the capital to raise the best people? No, that, that's why we started this fund. So the idea would be, yeah, if you're a great entrepreneur and you've got a big idea, come to, the, come to VCP, we'll yeah. give you 10 million. Nice. You know, like that's the that kind of, you're right. It doesn't exist. As an right. entrepreneur, I felt like there was a hole in the market. Yeah. You know, that was, it was frustrating. Right. You gotta like raise a half a million or a million you can't hire great people. Right. You got to prove something, but you're proving something without the best people. Right. It's set up to have a low risk. That's why most startups fail. Started six companies. I don't expect any of them not to work. Eh, maybe one or two won't, yeah. but you have a pretty good track record. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I just guess there's, a, there's a, like it's a playbook, right? Yeah, it's like, I know, right? It's like, how's this not going to work? We have the capital. We've got the best team. Right. It's a massive industry with tailwinds. Yeah. Like, how does that not work? Right. You have a great culture, great values. Like, yeah. people are motivated. Like. That's the kind of businesses that work. Right. <laughs> it's like... So we're, uh, we're just over a mile, how are you feeling? <laughs> I'm feeling like that's the longest I've run in a long time. <laughs> I'm feeling not bad. No, you inspired me. Maybe I'll actually get out and put some distance. How do you prioritize the profit versus impact? It's obviously, money is, is important, but I think it's also important to focus on, you know, what is the impact of this company and what can, what can I do to, to make this world a better place? Yeah, well, that comes back to mission and values. Right. What's the mission of the company? I think if you have a mission that's bigger than just dollars and cents, it'll motivate people. Yeah. And you'll attract the right type of person. You know, like diapers.com, the mission was to make moms and dads life easier. Yeah. So it doesn't always have to be some social mission. Right. It could be something that's like, you know, we're actually, we're getting emails from moms and dads and saying like, you it's so hard having a baby. Like, yeah. You saved my life, this is incredible. <laughs> like, right. I don't have to go out to the store, like have more time with my kid, you know. You wanna go, down, go around the block once? Sure. Yeah, so I just have two more questions for you. Yeah. I wanna hear more about the, the city of the future because I think that's fascinating. Yeah. So I'm building a city of the future. I, was, I spent a lot of time thinking about that, about what the world's gonna be like in the future. And then out of that come a lot of ideas. The mission for the city at the, at the highest level is to create a more sustainable and equitable future. Right. That's it. That's yeah. the mission. That's Full amazing. Stop. I just thought like it would be cool to test kind of a different version of Model. capitalism. Yeah. Still capitalism, not socialism or anything like that. We're calling it equitism, which is basically this idea that we're going to take worthless land in like the desert. Okay, so it's still in the United States? <laughs> yeah, in the United okay. States. And a foundation, a private foundation is going to buy the land. That's okay. basically worthless. If we can get five million people to come live in this city, that's, yeah, that's incredible. Five million the, people. Five is million the goal? people is a goal. Yeah, wow, it'd, be, it'd be one of the you know, largest cities in America. Wow. Um, that the land value of that city would be a trillion dollars. Okay. Then the foundation would own all the land and would basically lease the land to people that want to put up commercial buildings and things. Yeah. We estimate fifty to sixty billion dollars a year of income that the foundation would make. Okay. And the mission of the foundation would be to give this money back to the citizens. Okay, because well. essentially the citizens are creating the value in the land. The land right. was worthless. The people moved there. There should right. be some value 
accruing to the citizens. Right. So they feel like, oh, this is my city. Like, if this city does better, I do better. Mm -hmm. And this 50 to 60 billion is spent on free, amazing private school education for everyone in the city, right. you know, great yeah. medical care, That's free incredible. public transportation, affordable housing. Like, so this, like, it's, you get all the benefits of a socialist economy. There's no loser. There's no, it's not the government that owns the land. It's a private foundation. This is capitalism as it best. Yeah. When can so, we expect the city to, to be built? And like, and, I mean, ideally, you know, would start with like 50,000 people. Right. And sort of the center of the city. I think by 2030 would be amazing. Okay. To have that yeah. part done. I think and then probably another 10 years to get to a million and another 10 years to okay. get to 20, uh, okay. 5 million. It's really interesting because kind of by the year 2030, there's going to be 10 billion people on the planet. Yeah. And I, I mean, it's, it's hard to imagine how 10 billion people can sustain on this planet with the ways that we're currently living now. So I think that is Yeah, well, the so city, I mean, that's one aspect of the city is to prove this model and this reform version of capitalism. Right. The other is just to take all the learnings of, of all the cities and make it the most sustainable city in the world. Okay. It'll be only autonomous vehicles on the roads. Okay, wow. The roads will be much more narrow because you don't need as much space with autonomous vehicles. There'll right. be no street lights, no street signs. Right. It'll be like more efficient. Mm -hmm. All the garbage and the goods and services will move underground. So the town okay, will be very clean, very walkable, okay. lots of parks and yeah. things. Like it'll yeah. look like a city you want to live in. Okay. And work in. Yeah. yeah. So it's a pretty cool project. Like I said, it's gonna be decades, but yeah. this is my real like passion. And so last question, but if you could give, you know, one piece of advice to someone who wants to be successful, but also live and maintain a healthy lifestyle uh, and be sustainable, yeah. what would that piece of advice be? I mean, that's, that's tough. Everyone's striving for that, right? Right. I think it comes down to priorities. Right. Um, and something's got to give. So in order to create, be a successful entrepreneur, you do have to put in a substantial amount of time. You know, I, I'd say, you know, minimum kind of 60 hours a week. And if you, you know, if, if that means you're working really hard during the week, 12 hour days. Yeah. Um, or if you, if you don't want to work on weekends. So you got to be smart with your time outside of that. Right. So you do have, during the week, 12 other hours in the day. If you sleep eight, you still have four. Make good use of those four hours. You can have the whole weekend free. Like that's the key. You can work hard and it be okay if you're consistent. I think the unpredictability really like gets right. to people. So if you say like, you consistent know, in, in what consistent sense, one say like, I, I wake up at 7 a.m. and I'm working straight through to seven. Yeah. Like, don't bother me. Yeah. When seven comes, I'm yours. Yeah. Like dinner, we're yeah. gonna watch a movie, we're gonna like, that's it. Yeah. And people start to like, like come to expect, okay, I know at least it's hard, but I know it's seven, right. I can like, what happens is no, a, lot of people, right a lot of people, what they do is they'll just kind of like work, 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 have a little time, work, work, and then seven o'clock comes and you're there, dinner, oh, That's sorry, I gotta to take this call, sorry, it's really important, <laughs> yeah. let me do this. And then it's just like, you're like, I can never count on anything. We've got the dinner, call, might pop up. And even if a call doesn't pop up, there's like anxiety. Maybe yeah. a call's gonna pop up in right. the middle of dinner. Man, put, put some hard, yeah. Like lines in the sand. Okay. And doesn't matter how hard you work, just when you when you say you're not gonna work, don't work. Yeah. Don't take a call, push it, no matter what, no matter who it is. Okay. That would be the advice. Amazing. Yeah. I love that. Well yeah. thank you for running with me today. It's two point yeah. five miles. Oh, two five. Yeah, right. that's pretty right. good. What's on the agenda today? Every day is something different. You know, I, I like to, you know, meet with entrepreneurs. I do that all the time. Yeah. I like to give back and mentor people. I, I do a lot of that every day, probably just some meeting with some entrepreneur. Okay. Um, yeah, and then just like it's VCP, so um, I'm sort of coming up with the vision for a lot of these things, right. raising capital, hiring the best people, and then they're sort of doing the thing, and I'm there after that, right. help if they need more money, be an advisor, yeah. but I'm not having to put in the 60 hours a week in any one thing. It allows right. me to do lots of things. Right. Lots, yeah. lots of uh, wisdom today on the run. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so where can people find you on social? Uh, just at Mark Lorry. Okay. M A R C L O R E. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Mark, thank okay. you for coming on. All right. All right. <laughs> See ya. Thank you for watching another episode of Run with Sam. Today's guest, Mark Lorry, was super interesting and insightful. Um, I hope that you learned something. If you like this episode, please give us a like. Subscribe to Make a Change World and leave a comment down below for who you'd like to see as the next guest on Run with Sam. A huge thank you to Sweatcoin for supporting season one of Run With Sam. Sweatcoin is a really cool fitness-based application. They're available on the App Store or on Google Play. And what they do is they turn your steps into a currency that you can use on their marketplace. They offer really cool products and services like an iPhone, or you can even get classes like a yoga class. Or the coolest thing that I think is that you can donate your Sweatcoins to a charitable organization. And Make a Change World is one of those organizations. So if you donate to us, we'll make sure that we're cleaning rivers in Indonesia and removing as much plastic from our waterways. So get 
Sweat Coin today on the App Store or on Google Play.